Hey kids, it is great to see you back here in Grace Kids where this month we're talking all about what it means to bounce back. You know, when something knocks you down, you don't stay down, no, you get back up. And that is what we call resilience. See, resilience is getting back up when something knocks you down. It's not always easy to bounce back, but we can do it with God's help. So right now, what do you say we all bounce up to our feet? Let's sing out and worship God together. Come on, here we go. Sing this out. Hey, great job on that song, kids. Well, let's stop for just a moment so we can bow our heads and pray and talk to God together. Yeah, remember, when we pray, we're talking to God. So while I'm praying, you can talk to Him just like I am, okay? Let's pray together. God, we just want to stop today and say how much we love and appreciate you. We thank you for loving us, for saving us, and allowing us this opportunity to meet with our kids and to be with them and to be able to pour into them. God, whether it's in person or whether it's here online, we're grateful for every kid that you put place in front of us. And God, we don't take it lightly. So God, I'm asking for your help today that your words will flow through me so that we can clearly communicate to the children the importance of being resilient. God, we know we live in a tough world and there's a lot of times that we're going to face challenges and sometimes they're going to knock us down. But we know that you're with us and you can help us bounce back every single time. And I pray that you'll help me clearly teach this to the kids today. God, we love you and we appreciate all that you're doing in our lives. I pray that you'll bless all the kids, whether they're in person or watching here. You'll bless them and help them today to know how to live out their life your way. And that's the best way. So God, we love you and ask all these things in your name. Amen. All right, kids, we got one more song and then we're going to dive into the lesson.
Hello, and welcome to Series Schoolhouse Songs. The game is easy, my voice is not. I'm going to start singing a popular nursery song at a random point. Your job is to be the first to guess what song I am singing. Got it? Let's begin. Bags full. One for my master and one for the Dane, one for the little. Got it? Ba ba black sheep. Great job, next round. The world so high, like a diamond in the sky. Got it? Twinkle twinkle little star. Great job, next round. Came the rain and washed the spider out, out came the. Got it? Itsy bitsy spider. Great job, next round. And you know it stomp your feet, if you're happy. Got it? If you're happy and you know it. Great job, next round. Rosie a pocket full of posy, ashes, ashes we all. Got it? Ring around the rosy. Great job, next round. E-I-E-I-O and a moo moo here and a moo moo. Got it? Old MacDonald. Great job, next round. My handle here is my spout, when I get all steamed. Got it? I'm a little teapot. Great job, next round. On the bus go round and round all through the Got it? The wheels on the bus. Great job, next round. Do do. Do 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 grandpa shark do 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 grandpa shark. Got it? Baby shark. Great job, next round. Fell off and bumped his head, mama called the doctor and the doctor said. Got it? Five little monkeys. You rock, thanks for playing. Okay, kids, let's jump into this story because today's story is a big one. Now, I need to set up the story, so let me give you just a little bit of a recap. See, there was a man from Tarsus, and his name was Saul. It later becomes Paul, but at first, his name is Saul, and Saul was kind of a bad guy. See, Saul was an enemy of anyone who followed Jesus. He searched everywhere for those people, and when he found them, would throw them in jail. But then... Then Saul met Jesus, and everything changed, including his name. See, from that point on, Paul believed that Jesus was and is the Son of God. He changed the way that he treated people who believed in Jesus. See, Paul learned everything he could about Jesus and his teachings. He studied, he prayed, and then he set out to tell everyone about Jesus in many different cities and towns. Paul shared the good news about Jesus with everyone that he met. He even started several brand new churches. Some places welcomed him, some places didn't. See, some places even ran Paul and his friends out of town, telling him never come back. Still, Paul kept going. See, God eventually told Paul to go to Macedonia. So Paul and his friends, including a man named Silas, they set sail and traveled to the city of Philippi. Now, while they were there, God began to open the heart of this one particular lady, and her name is Lydia, and she believed in Jesus. And it's important to know her because her home became the place where this new church met in Philippi. And from there, Paul and Silas shared the good news of Jesus all over the city. And while Paul and Silas were on their way to a place of prayer, they met this woman who was acting pretty weird. <laughs> Kind of strange. See, this woman, she followed Paul and Silas around, shouting at them. 
and we find what she was shouting in Acts chapter 16 and 17. Again, she's following them around and she's saying, these men, they serve the most high God. They are telling you how to be saved. These men serve the most high God. They're telling you how to be saved. <laughs> well, of course, what the woman was saying was actually true. Paul and his friends did serve the most high God and they were telling people how to be saved. But the woman could not have known that on her own. She was being controlled by a spirit who didn't come from God, and that spirit was helping her predict things that were going to happen. See, she worked for men who were taking advantage of this, and they were making a lot of money off of her. And the woman did this for many days. These men! They serve the Most High God. They are telling you how to be saved. <laughs> Finally, Paul turned to the woman and said, In the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of her. At that very moment, the Spirit left the woman. And now the woman was free of the Spirit. She could no longer predict things. Well, the people that she worked for were really angry because... They couldn't make any money off of her anymore. So these men, they grabbed hold of Paul and Silas and they took them to the marketplace to face the judges. The judges heard the complaints and they ruled that Paul and Silas were making trouble. <laughs> Paul and Silas were beaten, they were whipped and dragged off to prison. Can you believe that? Paul and Silas were in prison even though they had done nothing wrong. Now, these two guys could have pouted. They could have just sulked and whined and complained, but they didn't do any of that. Instead, they chose to pray and sing songs and praise God right there in the prison. Now, we don't know exactly what they sang, but I'm sure it was a happy song. And while Paul and Silas prayed, praised, and sang, something incredible happened. There was an earthquake. The prison doors were knocked open wide and the prisoners' chains came loose. All of the prisoners, including Paul and Silas, could go free. The jailer woke up. He ran into the prison and the doors were open. And he's like, oh, I'm so getting fired. But Paul spoke up and he says, we're all here. And the jailer couldn't believe it. Paul and Silas, they could have escaped, but they did it. And the jailer asked Paul and Silas a very important question. Look it up. It's Acts chapter 16, verse 30. He said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Paul and Silas answered him. They said, Believe in the Lord Jesus. Then you and everyone living in your house will be saved. Paul and Silas told the jailer all about Jesus, sharing the good news and all that Jesus had done. The jailer then did something amazing. He took Paul and Silas out of the prison to his house to meet his family. It seems the jailer had a lot of kids and Paul and Silas told everyone about Jesus and every one of them at that house were baptized. Every single one of them were filled with joy. Well, the next day, the judge sent their officers to the jailer and they told the jailer to let Paul and Silas go free. But Paul and Silas weren't finished because in Acts 16, 37, Paul said, they beat us in public. We weren't given a trial and we're Roman citizens. They threw us into prison and now do they want to get rid of us quietly? No. Let them come themselves and personally lead us out. And guess what? <laughs> the judges did exactly that. They apologized and they asked Paul and Silas to leave the city. Well, after this whole ordeal, Paul and Silas returned to Lydia's house. Okay, we don't know exactly what they did when they got there. We don't know if they rested or if they ate a big meal, but we do know that Paul and Silas encouraged the believers that were gathered there to be brave, to stand strong, and to continue to spread the good news about Jesus. And this is such an amazing story. I mean, Paul and Silas were beaten and thrown into prison. 
but they didn't let that get them down. They continued to praise God. Nothing could take away the joy that they had from their relationship with God. And so it just goes to show us that you can choose joy when life gets hard. The fact is, all of us do have to face hard things from time to time. But with God's help, we can be resilient, we can bounce back, and we can choose joy. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Acts, chapter 16, verses 16 through 40. Paul, also known as Saul, had once been a terrible enemy of anyone who followed Jesus. But then, Paul met Jesus himself and everything changed. Jesus is the Son of God. After a time of prayer and study, Paul began to travel further and further from Jerusalem. He shared the good news of Jesus, started brand new churches everywhere he went. In some places, he was welcome. But in others, Paul and his friends were run out of town. Stone them! Stone them! Still, Paul kept going. When God called him to Macedonia, Paul and his friends set sail and traveled toward the city of Philippi. Few Jews lived there, but God opened the heart of a woman named Lydia to believe. Her home became the start of a fledgling church. From there, Paul shared about Jesus all over the city. Come, uh, let's go down to the place of prayer. Along the way, Paul and Silas were met by a girl who chased them, crying out, These men serve the Most High God. They're telling you how to be saved. Though the words were true, the girl was controlled by a spirit who did not come from God. Day after day, she followed Paul and Silas. These men serve the Most High God. These men serve the Most High God. These men serve the Most High God. These men... Enough! Paul spun around to face the girl. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of her. Immediately, the spirit left the girl. Oh. Oh. I feel like myself. Thank you. Thank you. Unfortunately, some men had been using the girl to make money for them. Since she had been freed by the power of Jesus, they could no longer do this. You've ruined our business. Yeah, now we're going to make you pay. The men grabbed Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to face the judges. These men are Jews. They're making trouble in our city. Yeah, they're telling people to do stuff that's against Roman law. Get rid of them! Without any chance to share their story, Paul and Silas were whipped. Then they were hauled to the jail. Guard them with your life. Yes, sir. Paul and Silas were marched down into the depths of the jail. Mm, it's damp in here. And dark. And deep. Their feet were fastened with chains. Good night, men. Though the jailer had locked the cell tightly, he may have paused to glance back at the men inside. He had heard the words Paul and Silas preached of a God who could forgive sins, a God who could truly save. It's all foolishness, right? The day faded, and so did the small amount of light in the prison cell. How's your back? Sore, but I've been through worse. Paul and Silas were shut away in a damp cell, unable to move freely, with painful wounds on their back, even though they had done nothing wrong. They could have complained, they could have sulked, but instead, they made a choice. Are you asleep? Not even close. You know, God sent an angel to get Peter out of prison that one time. Yeah, well, God can get us out of here too, or give us the strength to stick it out. <clears throat> Amazing grace, how sweet great the sound that saved a wretch like me. You're making me wretched, is what? But now was found, was mine, but now. 
'Twas grace that taught my heart to sing. As Paul and Silas sang, God sent a powerful earthquake to shake the prison. Doors flew open and chains fell off. We're free! Jolted from sleep, the jailer staggered into the prison to find every door hanging open. No! The jailer knew he could be killed for allowing prisoners to escape, so he pulled out his own dagger, ready to take his own life. Uh, don't harm yourself. We are all here. You stayed? Why? Guards, bring light! As torches flared around them, the jailer saw that Paul and Silas and the other prisoners had not escaped. He knew that the god Paul and Silas preached about must be incredibly powerful, so he threw himself at their feet. Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Believe in the Lord Jesus, then you and everyone living in your house will be saved. The jailer took Paul and Silas into his own home and washed their wounds as they shared the truth about Jesus with everyone. We want to be baptized right now. After Paul and Silas baptized the jailer and his family, the jailer prepared a meal for them. Everyone was filled with joy. In the morning, the judges of Philippi sent a message to the jailer to release Paul and Silas. We are Roman citizens, but they beat us in public and threw us in prison with no trial. Now they want us to leave quietly? I don't think so. When the judges heard this, they were afraid. They came and apologized to Paul and Silas before asking them to leave. Paul and Silas returned to Lydia's home and encouraged all the believers in Jesus. Then they left, knowing God would be with them, whatever they faced next. Wow. It's just amazing to think that Paul and Silas were so joyful when they were stuck in prison and they hadn't even done anything wrong. And just in case you were wondering, this was not a comfortable situation. This was a Bible times kind of prison, like dirt floors, bugs, chains, rats. It wasn't pretty. Think of the worst place then add a bunch of scurrying rats to it. Yeah, that's Bible Times Prison. And yet, Paul and Silas sang. They praised God. They found joy in the most joyless circumstance. They didn't get angry, sad, or bitter. They just looked to God, and God gave them joy. And you know what? You can choose joy when life gets hard as well. It's a choice. You can choose to be joyful. You can choose to trust God no matter what, and that'll help you bounce back. Of course, we all know that sometimes it's super hard to do. When something makes you angry or frustrated or when life gets hard, how do you react? You might get upset. You might complain. You might cry. Fight back. Honestly, those are pretty natural reactions. But if you take a second, just a second, to breathe, to pray and ask God to help, something pretty amazing happens. You find joy, peace, and patience where there was none before. So if you focus on what's good instead of on what's bad, and you remember just how much God loves you, joy will not be far, from, far behind and you'll just bounce back. And you know what? Our memory verse helps us to bounce back as well. So let's look at it again together. It's Isaiah chapter 41, verse 31, or Isaiah 40, 31. It says, but those who trust in the Lord will receive new strength. They will fly as high as eagles. They will run and not get tired. They will walk and not grow weary. Well, kids, thank you for being with us here today. I'm glad I got to hang out with you for a little bit. I can't wait to see you again. Check back later this week for our Kid Life Midweek Bible Study, and then we'll be back next weekend to continue learning about resilience. In the meantime, right hand up, high five. I'll see you soon.